whether you are already an established content creator or you just have a topic you feel passionate about and you want to take it to the next level, internet broadcasting may be a logical step in your forte of content creation. And I decided I'll be doing I'm going to be doing a video series on how to get started in internet broadcasting. And I figured the best place to start would be basically your video. This is before you even get to pushing out your feed to any of the streaming services such as YouTube or Twitch or Ustream. This is basically controlling just your video. For my video feed, to, in order to mix my feed, I use a piece of software called CamTwist. I've used this for a number of years. And this is Mac only, so keep that in mind. For Windows users, there are other pieces of software out there. Cam Twist is free. I'll put a link in the description of where you can get it. And for my purposes, and I think the purposes of most internet broadcasters, Cam Twist in general gets the job done pretty well. So I'll start off with the basics. Of course, you'll first want to select a video source or sources you'll be using. We're going to be creating setups, which are basically saved templates of different various video sources or effects you might layer on to give your extreme consistent look. And this will make things easier later when you're mixing your video which I'll explain more about how that works in a minute but I'll start by creating a video source I have my webcam Logitech camera I'll press control P to bring up the preview window so I can see what I'm doing I'll resize it make it a little smaller I have my video resolution at 720p which I'll explain more of what that means later but that basically is why the window launched at a certain size this is the actual size of what I would be pushing out to a streaming service what the actual full size of the video is, but I'm going to make this smaller so it takes up less screen real estate. Alright, so I have this right here. I have my preview window. I have cam twist. So I'm going to start by selecting my camera source, which is a Logitech camera. I use the Logitech C310. I'm not sure if they sell that anymore. That's a good webcam for starting out with broadcasting. I'm honestly thinking about getting a different camera, but I have not done that yet. Normally, I'd have that mounted on a tripod or whatnot. Of course, this is not the angle I would be using if I was doing an actual show, but this is just for tutorial purposes, so I figured that would be all right. We want to start out by saving this webcam as a setup so we can mix it into the stream in the Cam Twist Studio, which I'll show you in a second, but it's basically sort of like a mixing panel that lets you switch between different video sources and effects. It'll make your life way easier if you're streaming, especially if you have guests on and you're trying to mix in different pieces of content. But I want to call this webcam one. I'll just save that. All right. So this will be my main webcam, and I can also mix in things such as my desktop. So I'll make a desktop plus. I'll make a desktop one, and I'll call this main main desktop. So I know what this is. And let's just say you have other video sources here, like. Desktop Plus is what I'd recommend for showing your desktop. Regular desktop serve a legacy feature in Cam Twist. Slideshow for showing slides of images. Movies for playing black pre-recorded content. You can add in a Flickr set or VNC. That's used for bringing in a remote PC. I wouldn't use this for anything very intensive. If you need to show off something on another computer, then okay. I wouldn't use this for, say, bringing in Skype because VNC does not keep a very good frame rate. It'll produce very choppy video. So we'll bring in webcam one so I can show you the camera here. And then we'll select some effects. So you have, most of these aren't very practical. I'll show you a few like a pixelate. There's not many situations where you'd want to use this, an effect like this or a cube effect. Again, most of these effects aren't very practical, but there are a few here that will be lifesavers. And definitely bump up the quality of your stream by quite a few notches, such as text. This is a very basic feature, but one that is very, very appreciated, especially for presenting information such as maybe a show name or people's names, other information that might be important to the stream. You can customize the font. I'll make that impact since that's our logo font. I'll make the size a little smaller. I can move the position of the text anywhere I want on the screen. So I'll save that. Make sure when you save this, you press save selection only. It doesn't matter for effects like this if don't include video sources checked or not. Just make sure you press save selection only and you only have the text selected right here. So we'll go save setup, save selection only. We'll call this FST live or it's because this is just the text that I might want to display such if I'm doing my live show, Fancy Show Tech Live. 
I can also add an image overlay, which may be good for a number of reasons, such if I wanted to add in a logo, FST logo, I already have this prepped up here. I'll drag this into the stream. I can resize this however big or small I want. I would recommend having images optimized ahead of time because as you can see, sometimes they do not scale the best, but for the most part, it's all right. I'll put this maybe in the side right here. I can change the opacity so I can make it barely visible so I can like move my hand through it like this or I can make it totally visible. I can decide how much or little I want that in there. I might just want that in there as a bug say so no one steals the video. That's understandable. Or maybe I'd want it in there all the way. It lets you adjust a number of things. You can crop off part of the image. Of course you don't really need most of this in most practical situations but you never know when. Rotation. It's a quite nice set of features they have here. And I'll save that image overlay just as logo. And I'll make sure to press save selection only. Of course, I only have that selected. That will be important in a second when we go into Camp Toys Studio. So, we have our main effects saved. So, I'll show you Cam Toys Studio. You press Control S to get to that or go up to Tools and then Studio. Studio is basically like a mixing panel. When you're live, this allows you to switch between effects. So, I'll just bring in my webcam first. So, I'll show you the basics of how this works. And then I can bring in text I have, like Fast Live. There's different layers to this. My logo, I can bring them in one at a time or have both. It allows you to have a lot of flexibility of what you mix in and out. I can switch right to my desktop, barely any effort at all. All of my settings are saved from earlier. It already knows my presets. I have a few other presets set here that don't really apply, such as Skype. Well, let's just say uh, I launch Skype. I could have someone on video. I could capture it with Desktop Plus. There's a way to select certain parts of the desktop. I can select just the Skype window by going to Desktop Plus, combine, find the application window. You could select Skype here. And then you could capture, select a capture area of the Skype window. Like just to say if you're doing video conferencing, you just want to select their video, which is quite a nice feature. I'll switch back to my webcam now. This is basically the basics of it. CamTwist is not a very hard application to use. You may have to give it some time to get used to it, but once you get in the flow of it, CamTwist is both a very easy application to use, it's a ver the very good price of free, and it offers a lot of flexibility, has a very nice looking quality to it, and allows you to customize quite a lot. Once you really master this software, you can make a quite a professional looking stream. There's a few other features I need to go over. I'll close out of the studio for now. So one more thing you'll need to make sure you do, especially if you have an HD camera that may or may not have drivers supported by CamTwist, you'll want to go to your preferences and you'll want to check video devices. I have an external camera, a Logitech camera, and even though this doesn't always matter because most of the time the camera will go in 720, which means it'll be widescreen. If you're doing a widescreen, screen stream you may want to make sure if you have an HD camera that it goes into the right resolution so I just have it typed in here 1280 by 720 I'll go to general and this is where you customize things like your audio output device this is going to be used for playing vi back videos so it goes to the right output your frame rate of your stream I have it set 30 frames per second that's usually a pretty good frame rate for streaming and your video size so you can set here a custom video size. I have mine set 1280 by 720. Right now, I'd say 720p is a pretty good resolution for streaming at. If you have the bandwidth, you could do it at 1080p. I don't really see the point in it for live video streaming, so I just keep mine at 720, and that's the resolution of my camera anyways that I use for streaming. And video apps, this lets you change where the cam twist driver loads into. For the most part, you don't really need to worry about this. And that's about it on cam twist thank you for watching guys if you like this video be sure to leave a thumbs up leave a comment below if you want to see more videos like this i'll be doing more videos like this soon as i said this is going to be part of a series of videos about live streaming and what it takes to live stream i'll be doing more videos in the future on topics such as how to ma manage your audio and how to push out your stream to the world wide web what services to use that's about it for this video Thanks for watching you guys. I hope all of you have a good one and peace out.